Here are the problems that I'm going to be doing today. This is the second in a series of videos where I go through most of the set notation that you need at university. So let's go back to the problems and we start out with the empty set. And the first thing to say about the empty set is that it's a perfectly valid set. It's just a set that's got nothing in it. So the natural way of notating that would be this first one here, the two curly brackets with nothing in them. A perfectly valid representation of the empty set. We also use this one, this is an abbreviation, rather than having the curly brackets we use it with nothing in it, we have the Greek symbol phi and this is also a perfectly valid representation of the empty set. The reason I put this all up is that I want you to avoid using the third one unless that's exactly that's what you want. This third one is not the empty set. This is a set that contains the empty set. And it's important you don't confuse all of that because examiners really don't like it if you use the third representation to mean one of the first two. Before I go on any further, I just point out I've got more than 60 videos in my YouTube channel including such things as the integration by parts made easy, how CT scans work, intro to the proof of Fermat's last theorem, and the number is everywhere. So check out my YouTube channel if you're interested in any of them. Now let's go back to our questions and now we've got the power set. So we're given that A is the set containing 4 and you can see there C has got two elements in it and we're asked to find this. So this P with the normal brackets means the power set. And the power set of A is a set containing all the subsets of A. Now I explained in a previous video that a subset of A contains only none, some or all of the elements of A. You may prefer the more conventional sort of definition of a subset. And a subset is such that every element of a subset of A is contained in A. So you can use either of them. So the first thing about the power set is it's a set, so we're going to draw the normal curly brackets that represents a set. And inside we're going to put every subset of A. So if we look at A, the first subset of A is just the empty set. So I'm going to use the phi notation for that. And I'll put a comma, and now I'll put the next subset, which is just the set containing the element 4. And that's done that question. Now we go on to the next one. You can see here it's the power set of C, but we've also got these straight lines around the P of C. So that is the cardinality of the, the power set. And cardinality here means just the number of elements in the set. So our plan is to work out the power set of C, then we'll count up the number of elements and that will give us the cardinality of the power set of C. So let's do that. So the power set of C first. So we draw, we, we, we use the curly brackets, and now we look at every subset of C. So the first subset of C is the empty set. Then I'm going to put uh, a set containing 5, that's a subset of C. Then uh, a set containing 6, that's another subset. And then the final subset will be the subset containing 5 and 6, which is actually C itself. So C is a subset of C. So now when I look at the set, the power set, I can see that there are four items in it. And so the cardinality of the power set of C is 4. OK, let's move on to the power set of the power set of A. And if you can do this question, you've pretty much got everything covered in terms of empty sets and power sets that you might get in a test or an exam. OK, so you can see here I've put the first line, I've just replaced A with what it is, which is the set containing the number 4. But if you wanted, you could just go to the second line, because we've already worked out the power set of A in the first part of this question. So I've just here in this middle line replaced the power set of A with what it is. What is it? It's a set containing two elements, the empty set and the set containing four. So now we need to take the power set of that. So remember how we do it. It's a, power, it's a set, so we need to put the curly brackets on the outside. And now we start going through making up subsets of the power set of A. So the first thing is we could have a set that's got nothing in it, and that's the empty set. Next we could have a set containing just the first element, which is a set containing the empty set. Next we could have a set containing the second element, which is a set containing a set containing four. 
or finally we could actually get we could uh, get a set that's just made up of the two elements of the power set of A or if you like it's the it's the power set of A itself and that's the set containing the empty set and the set containing four. So that's it for empty set and power sets made easy. I hope you found it useful.